Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Linda Starr, and today is January 28, 2021, and this is a conversation with Dr. Dan Matthews. And we just want to welcome everyone and uh, say that this is actually session number two of a series of three calls, which are a gift from Dr. Dan. And it's our opportunity to have him expand the concepts that he brings forward when he does his uh, lecture group healings and private sessions. So the, the, the terminology that he uses that we can't quite keep up with, we're going to give him a chance to just uh, expand as long as he wants so that we get a clear, clear idea of what's, um, what's behind the language. This call is being recorded, and if you wish to listen to this recording or other recordings, you might write down, this is the recorded line. You dial in and you put a reference number in. So that number is 515-604-9697. Repeat, 515-604-9697. And the reference number for this call, if you want to listen to it again, will be reference number 269. So you'll dial that number and it'll ask you for a reference number, put it in, you can hear it. If you wish to hear Dr. Dan's backstory, how he got into this, the reference number for that call is uh, number 266. So uh, the only other piece of logistics is if you have a question for Dr. Dan, since you can't, you know, you're muted, if you will text me at 713-622-8900, 622-8900, I will ask the question and I'll get on the recording. So I'm, I'm not going to talk anymore right now. I want to introduce Dr. Dan and let him say a few words. You're up, Dr. Dan. Oh, okay. Well, thank you all for uh, dialing in today. I'm very honored to be here today to share with you uh, information that uh, has come forth in my sacred path, and um, it was all given to me freely, and I give it to you freely. So that's, that's how I feel about that. But I'm so honored to be here. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to expose you to more of Holy Divine Healing. Great. Well, we're delighted to have you here. We are very grateful. Today's um, topic that I wanted to ask you to expand on is what was covered in last Sunday's lecture group healing. And the, what you were working on, you told us, was called the Six Postulates of Truth. So... When I heard that, I had no idea what it had to do with anything. So teach me, please. You're, teach us, Dr. Dan, the six postulates of truth. Well, um, you know, um, we're right in the midst of purging the downfall world out of uh, ourselves and uh, humanity and the earth and the inner earth. And, um, and there's so much... Uh, divisiveness on the planet there, there appears to be many fountains of people's truth and uh, the problem is they conflict with one another and um, I've known for some time that absolute truth comes from the 33rd paradigm and uh, that's a long ways off from the human downfall world of the first second and third paradigm and and what I've come to find out is that people's perception of truth when you're in the bottom three paradigms and that's the fuel of, uh, of your consciousness of belief is what's responsible for that. Uh, it's really an illusion of your belief, your perception of truth. And, um, and so, uh, and then on further investigation, I discovered that the earth from its downfall world experience was in total isolation. We're not a member of the cosmic community. All of those lines of communication had been severed at the Big Bang. 
when a tenth of this universe was fractured off to create the universe, it, it disconnected the Earth from all of its intergalactic family and from other galaxies, cosmoses, universes in the nine clusters. And we became a part of a very small picture of one-tenth of this universe that was fractured off at the Big Bang, which is actually the universe, and its purpose is to house this human school of understanding that we call the downfall world. And and so there really is no truth here. And um, when this uh, information started coming forth, uh, it quickly evolved into being connected to intergalactic councils and uh, celestial bodies that we, we all know about, uh, but we were not really connected to them in the manner that had to happen in order for truth to be extended into the earth realm. And so that's that's how it all came about. And... Um, and it's all really kind of a function of our eighth level of consciousness that came in between Thanksgiving and Christmas, and that's androgyne consciousness and uh, the O paradigm. And in cosmic mathematics, O is whole. It doesn't mean the least. It means the most. And, um, and uh, you know, all numbers, no matter how big they are, are a fraction of O in cosmic math. In human math, O is a uh, not even a sign of value. It's simply a placeholder. But it's totally flipped and upside down, and that's pretty much the essence of the human downfall world. And these uh, postulates of truth, um, the first one started by connecting our androgyne consciousness to the cosmic post, which is the North Star, absolute north. And... Um, you know, a post is a survey term, and um, for example, uh, all real estate uh, surveyed that west of the Mississippi River is surveyed from the Arkansas post that's in a swamp in southeast or south yeah, southeast Arkansas that was put there by the French back in the Louisiana Arkansas Territory days, and. Um, and so that's what a post is, and a cosmic post is the North Star. It's the center of all survey of this cosmos. And so in order to have directional um, truth, things have to connect to the North Star, and so is our androgyne consciousness now. And then um, the rest of the other five involve the constellation of Pleiades, which turns out is the parental beings of our celestial body and then uh, Arcturus is its parent so that makes it our grandparent and then uh, Orion is uh, like seven grandparents up the line and so you need to have uh, continuity and connection well first of all to Pleiades and that's what uh, this was about bringing truth to the earth it uh, for the individual person that connected Pleiades to our pituitary gland, and then there was a Pleiades connection to the inner earth, the holy old earth, and then humanity of our human collective, and then finally Pleiades to the androgyne consciousness, our eighth level of consciousness. So by encompassing those six postulates of truth, truth is now being brought to the earth. And after the uh, near death of America that we witnessed at 1-6, um, it was a very jarring event to a lot of people, and hopefully it cracked the shell of their hardened beliefs to allow this new truth to penetrate into each person. And, um, and so that's the, the purpose of it and uh, the hope of it. Excellent. Excellent, thank you. Uh, what I'm I'm curious to know is there anything that we as individuals will notice as a result of that that blessing in the group healing, where these six well, postulates were installed. Well, the the possibility exists. It's really up to the individual's willingness to examine what belief actually is and and see um, you must choose 
victory over your problems more than you got to be right or win. You cannot have both of those two things, or, or if you can, it's a very, very rare thing. And so you have to surrender the being right and winning to have victory over problems. And, um, and you have to understand that belief is a fuel of consciousness, and it's all about hearsay. Belief is opinions held about the parts of life that you have no knowing of. And so certainly a lot of beliefs are going to be false. And, and um, you know, it's, uh, it's a poor substitute for knowing. Uh, knowing only comes from your inner divinity. Well, we lost that connection when the Big Bang happened at the dawn of time, when we went from being a holy being to a human being we lost the connection to our inner divinity and there went our cosmic consciousness. And, and, and that's when, uh, uh, you know, belief uh, has been looked at and uh, been said before that it is actually the consciousness virus of the downfall. We went from knowing to belief. And belief is a programming. And it all goes back to the type of school of understanding that was brought in here to teach us understanding. It was from a system of one outside of the nine clusters. A planet of one was brought in here that was captained by Yahweh, the God of one of the Old Testament, the God of belief. You know, belief is in the Old Testament over 2,000 times. And um, and so, uh, you know, to go to this school of understanding, you have to check your knowing in at the door. And being disconnected from your inner divinity was the process that that was achieved. And you also had to submit to have the trinity of your being, which consists of 20, 21 bodies, to be disassembled and fractured. And from there, you get to find your way back home, having lessons and understanding along the way and that was its purpose and and uh and so now that with the exiting downfall world off of the planet that started with the full moon eclipse of september 2015 due to complete and september of 2021 you know we're taking all of this garbage out of us uh, the fracturing the hideous experiences and all of that has to come up to come out and be flushed down the moon portal, which is the portal of exit of all of that model of one carnage that goes back to the model of one from where it came. There is no um, junkyard or toxic dump created by this. That's the purpose of the moon portal, which is an adjunct off of the Miglio Meglius portal. And its purpose is to rid us of the downfall debris of our human carnage and and to allow us to maintain the understanding that we've acquired by having these lessons of understanding. But now it's time to come out of our belief and uh, to perceive the truth once again. And, uh, and it'll have to come from within because... Uh, there's no way that the news media, from any angle, is ever going to adapt to this. They, they have a, they have their own agenda, but the truth is that of the will of your inner holiness, and and that's uh, why this was so important. So you, you I believe, did I hear you say that we were disconnected from our knowing previously? Yes. And yes. we and have that, access. That's a big thing. At yeah. the Big Bang, we became disconnected, but uh, now we have access to our knowing? Well, uh, these are the stages that it's coming back in. Yes, the, the postulates of knowing consciousness have been reestablished as our new infrastructure. There'll be other components of this that go further up the chain as we continue to heal the damage that was intentionally created, actually, so that we can have these experiences as being a human and uh you know lessons of understanding that was its whole purpose so okay i have a question that came in sure um it says i heard the word quote unquote slept s-l-e-p-t was the most tweeted word on january 7th is the uh, need for more sleep part of this process Okay, now I didn't hear what that word was. 
followed the word by was the slept, S L E T T. Okay, slept. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Is sleeping part of the purging process? Is, are we sleeping more? Is that how we're assimilating this shift? Well, it's a big part of it. Uh, you know, our subconscious is what cycles in our dream time, and our subconscious is our past lives. And uh, that's on one end of it. The other end of it is that it's the part of our nervous system that controls, coordinate function, and heals our body. And uh, while we're living life, you know, all of these automatic functionings of our body are happening through the autonomics, the hormonal system, and things of that nature, uh, that's all made up of the subconscious. And, but that's also, the, uh, on the other end of subconscious is our past lives. And, and that's what you're dreaming about, is uh, the cycling of your past lives. Okay? Any, uh, well, it's, it, makes, it's, it makes sense to me that the past life recycling is part of the cleanup. What we're here to balance out whatever is unfinished business. Yeah, and you know, it's well known in the natural healing circles the better you sleep, the better you heal. If you can't yeah. sleep, you can't heal. And yeah. So, sleeping is very important to healing. I'm going to, I want to repeat the text number if you have a question. It's 713. 713- Two two eight nine zero zero. Any questions for Dr. Dan that you would like to to have answered on the call? Okay. Well, is um, anything else on the six postulates of truth, or um, shall we move on to the next the next question, the next yeah. uh, topic? Um, we were. Um, just, we were talking. Was there anything more you wanted to say about the whole the, the moon portal and its function? And how can we use it ourselves? Is it available for certainly for me and everybody on the call? And how just um, let um, tell us more about the Holy Elm Moon Portal. Okay. Oh. Well, like I was saying, it's an adjunct of the Miglio Maglius portal, and um, the moon portal is designed to, uh, uh, to to be an exit portal for all debris of the downfall world, and and it clears, cleanses, and heals. If if part of your own pieces of fractured off parts of your own being go into the portal, it cleanses it and it heals it and it returns it to you. It's very uh, intelligent, and uh, but all things that are rubble of the downfall world of the model of one, it leaves the model of the holy O. Oh, that's an impurity; it can't be allowed to exist here, and it is just simply sent back to the model of one outside of the nine clusters. And there is, there's no junkyard or anything like that of your human downfall world stuff. There was, and in, in your unconscious which is the gateway to the underworlds that contains your carnage, but all of that is cleared and healed and put into the moon portal as your unconscious returns to its connection to the nine clusters. See, its holy order purpose is to keep you in the matrix of your holy being of the nine clusters, and when you're there, everything is fine. Well, you know, we all got disconnected from that at the Big Bang as we went to this school of understanding that we call the downfall world. So, but the, all of that garbage goes through the moon portal uh, to be taken out of the earth. And it was always designed that way, and it's now very much functioning. So that's really all I got to say about that. Unless there's questions. What if I wanted? Let's say I get triggered. I get upset during my day something, I had an expectation, it didn't happen, and it has me all emotional, how would I, how would I utilize the, the moon portal to get back to center? Well, 
<clears throat> first of all, you would do the parable. You, uh, you know, you got a problem. Uh, you uh, own it. That's the first step. You have to accept that you have a problem, and and uh, and like I've always said, if you got one, you play a part in it, or it wouldn't be your problem. So you accept it, and then you surrender the whole nine yards to your higher power, yield to its will in your life, show up in this day and take your step in trust, and direct all impurities of your shadow to exit through the moon portal. And you could definitely stick that on there. And I've had several patients that use it every day. And um, but if you but if you do the parable, the moon portal thing is automatic. It just it's a part of it. Um, so it's not you, you can use it for a conscious cleansing. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a part of a of a decree of a, a mental decree. Uh, you can certainly utilize that. So it, it's there uh, to be utilized, but it also happens automatically if you're in the posture of living the parable of being a Christed being, and that, that puts you in the posture to be shown, told, and led in the moment by your inner holiness. And, and that's what you want. That's what, that's what pays off the big bucks on this earth. Okay. Okay, uh, Barbara has texted me that she has a question, so I'm going to ask her to press star 51 and unmute and ask her question. All right. Are you there, Barbara? Earth to Barbara. Hi, Barbara. All right. Are you with us? Press star five one and it should unmute. Well, in that case, just text me your question, Barbara, and I'll ask it since you're not unmuting. Okay. Well, that's complete, and we don't appear to have any other questions at this time. So I'll move on to the next topic, and that was uh, you mentioned mental decrees and using them to create what divinity, divinity desires in our lives. So could you speak to that, the mental decrees? <clears throat> yeah, mental decrees are a method of the of the person in harmony with the divine to set life into motion to achieve wonderful things in life. And there's three bars of uh, uh, that need to be cleared in order to make a divine decree. Uh, number one is that what you're asking for has to be of benefit to the divine flow of life, your inner divinity. It has to glorify your inner divinity. And secondly, um, it has to benefit you and everyone else. And thirdly, it has to create loving, kind, joyous feelings into life. And if you decrease such things... Um, the, you know, the easy example I've used for a long time is to tell your inner divinity to put a tube of light through and around you to shield and protect you from all forms of discord and then to go before you and bring out the very best and highest in all people in your life. And that's a very powerful decree that satisfies all three of those elements and, uh, can tremendously improve the quality of your day because uh, there's good and bad in everyone and what you call forth is what's going to come out. And if you have a conscious intention of that before you get into someone's presence, it has an amazing effect on the encounter and it uplifts them. And uh, they may not even realize it, but they'll feel it as, it, as the uh, 
communication unfolds. Is is this something you do one time, or do you do it every morning, or do you yeah, do every it day. Every, day, every day? Every day. Every day. Yeah. You know, you have to recenter every day. Oh, okay. Yeah, the sun comes up, the sun goes down, and then it, when it comes up again, the first part of your day should always about be in recentering with your inner divinity because you've been cycling a lot of your past life garbage all night, and you oh. just have to... You know, you have to recenter every day. I'm the same way. If if I go three or four days without that step, my life starts headed off in the ditch a little bit. And it's well, like, oh, well, i got to get back to basics. So, you know, you got to do rudder checks real regular to see that you're on track and you're doing the will of your inner holiness. Well, we take a shower every morning. We brush our teeth every morning, so it makes perfect sense to sure. do yeah. your cosmic cleansing as well excellent okay any t- give us some examples of other applications that you use mental decrees for i mean are you going to use it for your new electric car or your solar panels on your roof that'd be good for everybody um, you know my my daily prayer uh, is a decree and um and I do those every day, and they're designed uh, to keep me centered. You know, that's a divine decree we we use at, to start the healing of the group healing, where we come into a crystal of the Holy Oak. And so it's always wonderful to start your day with a divine decree, you know, and and uh, to reaffirm that uh, to your inner holiness that you're here to serve the divine. and. You know, you need to do that. It, it realigns you with your spirit. And it's something that has to be done daily because it's such a tumultuous world we live in. It's a, it's jarring, you know. And and when things are jarred, they kind of have to be recalibrated and realigned. And so we require that in order to stay on track. So... Uh, you know, a daily decree for you to be in harmony with spirit is uh, an awesome thing. And and um, I think everyone kind of has to find that for themselves. And I came on to divine decrees when I was doing the studies of, of the teachings of St. Germain through the I Am Sanctuary. They actually have a book that the whole thing is divine decrees for specific instances in your life and I, I, I definitely uh, I encourage you all to uh, not only read that book but read all of them they're very inspiring and uplifting and they'll give you a tremendous amount of knowledge on what you can do in the spirit world to fortify your life and all others you know so it's some beautiful teachings do you, do you have a location for those books or titles of some of those books if people want to? You know, um, most big cities have an I Am Sanctuary, and that's that's where the books are sold. And, uh, yeah, I have, a, I have a bookshelf over here that they're in. Uh, let me see if I can get over here and read some of the spines of this book um, see here. it's in an old antique bookcase I don't want it to fall apart on me here um, yeah the uh the first book, um, Unveil, uh, The Un- Unveiled Mysteries of uh, Godfrey Ray King. And then the second book is Godfrey Ray King, The Magic Presence. Uh, the third book, The I Am Discourses, Ascended Master St. Germain. And... Uh, the fourth book, The Ascended Master 
instructions by the Ascended Master St. Germain and uh, <laughs> Pat Garcia tells us that Phoenix Bookstore has it. Okay. Phoenix Bookstore. Okay. Oh, got another here's another question. What does the I am stand for? That that is You know, somebody else could answer that better than I could. It's the twelfth paradigm is the I am and, and that uh and you know this is the thing people don't realize um, the model of one which was brought in here by the council of the plan of grand design of the nine clusters of the all that is of the holy O was brought in here for the purpose of creating a school of understanding and that model of one runs through 12 paradigms it starts at the first paradigm and goes through the 12th <clears throat> well the first paradigm is death, destruction, killing, war, mayhem, carnage. The twelfth is the I am. And that's the beautiful end of the model of one. But the model of one is its duality, hypocrisy, and polarization. Because of those two ends, they almost like oppose one another. And, uh, and that's what hypocrisy is. And but you see, uh, when we were holy beings before we became human, we had 13 components of divinity inside our soul vessel. And then at the Big Bang, the soul vessel was broken open and the components of divinity went outside of us and were spectrumized on a totem pole called the hierarchy of one. Our God particle went to the top, our Elohim second, our Archangel, Angel, Ascended Master, Earth Goddess, and Right on down the line, at the, at the very bottom, was an empty, fractured soul vessel, <clears throat> and that's what self is. And self is the human condition. Well, self never got beyond the third paradigm. It actually started off in the first, at the downfall, and, and that is a terrible place to be. Those are barbarians. And the second, you know, is... Uh, not uh, well. It's better than barbarian, but it's it's not death, destruction, killing, and war. It's robbing, stealing, cheating, lying, and politics. See, our political process has been stuck in the second paradigm ever since the second paradigm was created, and uh, it's still there today. And and uh, and then the third paradigm is not as lethal as the first too, but it's still not pleasant. It's gossip, condemnation, criticism, self-pity, being judgmental, and self-righteous, and labeling others. Um, and, um, and that's where religion was actually created, was in the third paradigm. And, uh, and its purpose was to bring people out of the first and second up to the third. It was the barbarians' first step of ascension was to be in indoctrinated into a belief of a higher power and um, with the savior model and and that was very successful at bringing people out of the first two paradigms up to the third and um, but then eventually we started piling up problems from belief consciousness so the belief generators are in the third paradigm like religion and and um, and yes, it was a wonderful thing, but then the, the issues of belief started to pile up. Well, what are those? Well, for one, if you're in belief consciousness, you separate from others based on your differences. And it got the people of the first and second paradigm to separate from the first and second paradigm. That was good. But you can see the problem it's causing now. Uh, I mean, it's it's the reason there are so many different religions and denominations within religions is because people have different beliefs, and their beliefs make them separate from others based on those differences. And then belief consciousness, see, that's just that's a fuel of consciousness. It causes people to see life in the little picture only. And it also causes people to blame others for the pain of their own creation. And so 
over time you build up a lot of debris with that type of consciousness and it's driven the world into a brink of collapse and that's why we have to go to the next bigger picture up the paradigm ladder and make a bigger picture of life that will have the answers for the littler picture of belief consciousness and and that's what ascension is all about and as we climb that ladder we have to flee the imperfection of those small uh, lesser dimensions off of us and that's where the moon portal comes in and that's where living the parable of Christ consciousness see that allows you to climb the ladder of higher consciousness that creates bigger and bigger pictures allowing us to escape the problems of the lesser picture do, do you have any information on the fourth and fifth paradigms yeah um, you know the fourth paradigm and the fifth paradigm they came into the earth realm in 2003 I think the fourth came in in 2003 and the fifth came in in 2004 they've only been here a short time and they're the buffer zones between the downfall world and the new holy O earth that'll uh, initially start at the sixth paradigm and uh, and they're being sacrificed just to keep purity at its highest and but it's those bottom three paradigms that is actually the downfall world of our shadow of our egos belief you know it's all about that it's a belief consciousness ego driven reality where people see the little picture separate from each other based on differences and avoid responsibility for their own creations that kind of thing so you're saying the third and fourth I mean the fourth and fifth are going to go away and yeah we'll they're not going to be, be here either but they you know they're there and they're you know the fourth one is, is about it uh, feeling connected to others on earth and the fifth one is about um, feeling connected to yourself on earth and and um, but they're all better you know uh, they're they're really uh, going from one level of consciousness to the next it's a factor of 10 in other words the fourth paradigm is 10 times more conscious than the than the third the fifth is 10 times more conscious than the fourth and so they're logarithms that's what a logarithm is they're factors of 10 uh, of the increase of consciousness as you climb the consciousness ladder so um, but the new holy O earth will start at the sixth paradigm and that's a beautiful place that's where people have agreement they have shared agreement and they perceive life the same they see the same thing by looking at the same thing and they have common solutions to problems and they have positive feelings as a result of the experiences in life with one another and, and that's a huge improvement are they giving us any timing on when that will is it slowly incrementally coming in or some people there now or are we all going to go there yeah uh, the thing is that people have to get through their purge right now and um, but yeah uh, you know the group healings we do are for putting the infrastructure into the new holy O earth that's our new home that's what we're actually doing but it also has an impact on this side of the veil of the human realm and and uh, and and my hope see uh, none of the um, you know we have eight levels of consciousness four of them can work in belief they're all designed to work in knowing the bottom four can work in belief but they're not near as good as they are in knowing but the top four they just simply cannot work in belief you can't do Christ consciousness in belief you can't do cosmic consciousness in belief you can't do goddess consciousness in belief and you certainly can't do androgyne consciousness in belief so as these levels of consciousness are integrating into us for the big picture purpose of its effect in the new holy old earth it's its effect in the human downfall world is to allow people to live in the bigger picture of life as you go through your purge and if you can do that 
you do it in dignity and grace because you maintain the perspective of the purpose of this purge. We have to clean it out of us. It can't go to the new holy order. And also you maintain hope for the new holy order. And so you've got those two big advantages if you're living in the bigger picture. And that always comes from higher consciousness, which these divine realms of our consciousness are. And I have a, I have a resource that Kat Garcia has sent in. It's from Phoenix Books. They're in Columbus, Ohio. And the website is www.phoenixbooksltd.com. So that's T-H-O-E-N-I-X-D-O-O-K-S-L-T-D.com. So that's the distributor for St. Germain Press and out of print books. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Pat. Yeah, thanks, Pat. Yeah, those books were very uh, inspiring to me. And, uh, you know, I had done, um, you know, fundamental Christianity. I was raised that way. And and, uh, I lived across the street from the Baptist church that my dad was a deacon in, and my mom sang in the choir and taught Sunday school. So I was in there three times a week and uh, it was back in the day of people you know the religions were trying to scare people into heaven and it was a hellfire and bent, hellfire and brimstone type of a service that I was not a fan of I always felt scalded when I came out of there I did, definitely didn't feel better and, uh, and when I went to chiropractic school I I found out about Unity Christianity, which was uh, uh, the school of uh, Unity Village was just, out, it was a suburb on the outskirts of Kansas City. And so I really enjoyed discovering that when I was in Kansas City. And uh, and it was just amazing how good you felt when you came out of the church service. You know, you were like a child of God with infinite possibilities <laughs> instead of being a worthless sinner that was doomed to hell type of an approach. So I I really very much appreciated that. And and that led me into uh, reading a lot of Unity books, but I also got into the teachings of Emily Cady, who was the teacher of the Fillmore's that started Unity. And there were two other people. One of them started um, the Science of Mind, and the other one the Seventh-day Adventists. And... You know, I've read the big texts of Science of Mind, and and I've read uh, Seven Day Adventist books, and and um, got involved with uh, several different denominations of Christianities with Bible studies and whatnot. And and one day it just all dawned on me that by reading that book and holding God into that book, that I was telling God who He was allowed to be, instead of allowing God to show, tell, and lead me. <laughs> of who he was and what he wanted me to be. So I kind of went from religion to spiritual uh, over that one little aha moment. And um, But I, I read the books of St. Germain. That, a, a month after I finished those, I had my heat stroke and started down the yellow brick road of holy divine healing. So it, it prepared me well. And... Um, but I, I very much uh, want to do the, the parable of being a Christed being over a religion because when you do the parable, you put yourself in the posture to be shown, told, and led in this moment through the divineness of life. And uh, you let God and Jesus out of a book and let them be free. It just worked a lot better for me, and it, it just seemed the right way for me to go. But, you know, people are at different places in their spiritual unfoldment, and um, and my hope for them is that each person is in the right place for their next step. And, and so that's, that's how I feel about that. We're open for questions. If anyone has a question, 713-622-8900. Okay, you know, we have a. Go ahead. 
Yeah, go ahead, Linda. Well, I was just going to say we have about another 10 minutes before we begin to wind up. So okay. any burning questions, now is the time. Now is the time. You know, one thing that comes to mind that I might well say here is that, um, you know, we, we really live in two worlds. Uh, we live in what I call man's world, and that's the technology world of all the wonders of science and technology. And and in that world, uh, being real smart, educated, taking pride in your work, being a hard worker, that really pays dividends. And and that's really what you want. If you go hire somebody to work on your refrigerator or air conditioner, you want somebody that knows what they're doing and takes pride in their work and does a good job for you. So that's a wonderful focus to have in that world. But in the natural world and uh, things like uh, us, <laughs> you know, our, our health and our emotional, mental well-being, and our spiritual connection to the divine, that's all a part of the natural world. And that's a totally different world than man's world. I mean, they're about as similar as buttermilk and moon rocks. You know, they they don't have much in common. And, and the big difference is that in the natural world, the intelligence that makes it happen comes included. You never have to duplicate that with your educated brain. You just have to learn how to be in harmony with the force and whatever endeavor that you're undertaking. And if you know how to do that, you can be very successful. You can have a green thumb in the natural world. And beautiful things will always come your way. And uh, you will always get more than expected once you learn to ride the the wave of just being in harmony with the process. That's that's what that's what makes it work. I got another question here. Okay. Why why do we dream of people we know in this lifetime? Because you go through your incarnation with a two hundred and fifty soul family membership. And these are beings that uh you go through all of your incarnations with, you change gender and relationships, and and you have 250 of those. And so a lot of people that are in your life right now, you've been through all of your incarnations with. That's why. Frequent, I, I tend to, if I dream of someone, I usually get on the phone with them the next day and this, to me it's just a trigger that there's something there's something there here's another question is there something we can do to protect ourselves from 5g does it interfere with our inner harmony well <clears throat> you know it's a new thing and it's very controversial um, but, you know, I, until it's proven to me that it actually is harmful, um, I put that in the category with the rest of the conspiracy theories. And um, I don't think that it's healthy to do conspiracy theories. Um, for one thing, they're based on hearsay. What's hearsay? It's belief. And people tell me, well, I really believe this. And I'm going, well... Your belief is about the parts of life you have no knowing of. I'm not particularly impressed with your beliefs. I'm impressed with what you know and what you understand. That stuff's much more truthful, you see. But people go off on conspiracy theories and stuff. In my experience, it reflects the the damage and the carnage that they carry through their past lives that's reacting to this stuff. And... Um, when I work on th- such things with people, there's always a, a list of dates from past lives where they had terrible things happen to them, and that's influencing heavily the response that they're having to these uh, broadcast beliefs of conspiracies out there. So um, I always take those things with, a, you know, I'm not saying that 5G is good for you. I haven't... Uh, had the understanding of it yet to uh, mm-hmm. come, you know come up with that, but it is a conspiracy thing right now. Mm-hmm. Perhaps some of our 
advanced dowsers could check to see whether it's detrimental or not. And yeah. what it makes, Open what I think. Go ahead. Pardon? Yeah, we can check with that leg length and see if we can get an answer. But uh, it occurs to me, you know, there's stories of advanced yogis who can drink battery acid and not be harmed by it. It seems if we if we purge enough of our downfall material, we're going to rise up in frequency and, you know, probably be able to walk across the swimming pool at some point. So that's a, a thought. Um, okay, here's a here's another question. Do we know what type of children are being born lately? Not indigo children? Well, uh, that's not an area of expertise of mine. I don't, uh, I never really got into that. Um, I know that children are wonderful, uh, but I don't know an indigo from, a, uh, from another one. Mm-hmm. They're just children with unlimited potential to me. And, and I think that, you know, we tremendously uh, can help that unfold uh, as mm-hmm. adults. But as as far as what each one is and and their potentials, I, I don't uh, I don't have any expertise in that area. Well, I've read that as we incarnate, we tend to come into a family that has a similar frequency to what we've achieved through our past lives. Whatever whatever our emotional frequency is that'll be the group we're going to join. Well, as you said, this whole 250 soul family people. So it's, it's, we're going to be with our tribe. And, um, you know, uh, the goal is to learn, grow, expand, ascend. So if we get clearer and cleaner, we're probably going to attract souls that are operating at that, at that level. So I have the same buoyancy. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, I've seen a lot of, you know, I've seen little children come in that were their grandmother's grandmother their last life. You know, I mean, they trade a relationship. Mm. Okay. Well, we're coming to the end of our time here today. So let's, uh, let me just wind this up with some announcements. If you want information about Dr. Dan's biweekly letters, and information on the the lecture and group healings he does twice a month on Sunday afternoons, you'll want to go to his website, which is holydivinehealing.com. That's holydivinehealing.com. Go go to the store. You know, the holydivinehealingstore.com will work better. Oh, it will? The Holy Divine Healing website has got problems right now. Oh, but uh, the other one's an uh, Instagram website. It's holydivinehealingstore.com, and that's where you go if you want to buy, like, the group healing, or, and that's where the letters are at. Oh, yay, I learned something. Thank you. You're welcome. Holydivinehealingstore.com. Okay, we're going to get this right. Now, if you want a private appointment with Dr. Dan, if you want him to do a long-distance telephone surrogate appointment, you're going to call him directly. This is his cell phone, 501-416-1996. That's 501-416-1996. Those appointments last about a half an hour. And um, and I don't text. He does not text. He doesn't email. He doesn't text. Voice. This is voicemail cowboy here. That's me. <laughs> okay. So uh, I would I thank you, Dr. Dan, for your generosity and your all your wisdom. And thank you, everyone, who was on the call. Please feel free to invite anyone who has curiosity or wants to check this out. 
uh, this call, we can hold up to a thousand people on this line, so we can we can help Dr. Dan get his message out to the world. And um, so, just give them give them the number that you have have dialed in, and we'll be happy to to welcome them along. And um, let's see, today's reference number for the recording it's reference number two six nine. And to call in and listen to that, it's area code 515-604-9697, 604-9697. Today is number 269, and his backstory and history is number 266, if you want to send it to someone who's asked questions, who is he and what are we talking about. So I am, I'm going to... Turn the recording off, and we'll just look forward to seeing everybody next week, 10 o'clock Central Time on Thursday. Thank you. Have a fabulous week.